Okay. How to detach from what you don't want. You see, how to detach from what you don't want. And I put my hat on here. <clears throat> so let's first of all breathe. Breathe into your heart now, right now. Always remember, just when in doubt, breathe into your heart now. Breathe into your heart now. Be right where you are, right now. Just notice where you are. And be right there. We're together here. And acknowledging and knowing that I know who you are. And my work is to empower myself and you and all living entities to fully remember and be who we really are eternally. I call that the divine experiment. I'm still doing the divine experiment that has been the source of my ministry, my teaching, you know, my, the books that I've written, the courses, classes, all of this, this, this work. And <clears throat> the key here is we want to leave, here's the first thing, leave the, the unconscious of, of the masses. Leave, leave this planetary consciousness. Leave this, uh, what do you call it, race consciousness. This is the race going on between all different races and we're speeding somewhere as if we're going somewhere. Speeding through space as if we're going somewhere. But you're really never going anywhere because you're always right there. Right now here. We're all, that's always where we are. It looks like it's going. It feels like it's going. And we're reacting and it's a story. But really, you're always right there. And do you say, whoa, what does that mean? Okay. A lot of these things I say maybe you don't get right now, or maybe you do, or completely beyond it, I don't know. But it's, it's like, it's basic stuff. This is, this is what, what, what is the basic teaching most people do not have because it's not being taught out there because they want to keep people in tents, you know, in, in fear and anxiety because then people freeze and are immobile and will do anything to try and survive. And uh, so what we want to do, uh, and survival is not our purpose. We're already eternal life. We don't need to survive. And you need to maintain your body, obviously, and you want a healthy body. And uh, that's all, there's, there's a biological and a psychological cause for health and for any kind of sickness. And so when you know the truth of how everything operates, it sets you free. Free to be and to do and to have that which is your heart's desire, that which is resonates with you and who you really are, and the expression of the your talents and abilities and how you work to to bring forth uh, greatness for all beings. So you want to leave the collective unconscious behind. Because whenever you identify with something, you're going to take on uh, its qualities. This is a, remember I used the word blunk? So this is a trick in mind programming, is to put everything into a box. That, and they say, well, like if I said, all astrology is bad. No, I never said that. I, never, I said, I've gotten good things from it, wonderful things and all though. But also remember that it's also a limitation just like Nostradamus and all of that kind of thing. Because what are they promoting is this astrological changes and never said anything good, it's always horrible, it's always bad and all that. I don't, that's not my game plan, you see. So what we do is all this mass consciousness training goes on, especially through movies, through the, the broadcasting of radio, of internet, of the books that are accepted to be read and taught in schools, the training of educators, the, you know, the religious systems that are institutionalized in that sense and that are promoting an agenda. Because see, we always, I have an agenda. You know, everybody does. You know? And, and, and I, you know, I conspire with my friend Michael, who does all of this work. What do we do? We talk about what we want to do. We come together and we share 
and communicate our ideas so that our agenda gets out there, which is for the goodness uh, the, the, of, of all living entities. You see, the false reality is this reality of, of death and pain and suffering. This is a duality reality. And that duality then causes the doubt in the self. And then when we ha have doubt in ourselves, we're always looking where to outsource to get some power to bring back to ourselves of what we think we don't have or don't have. So when we identify with a group, say I identify with a just a nationality that is, but you know, if you look at what is a nation, okay, it's a lot of rules and a lot of laws and a lot of signed documents and a, all these kind of things that say who you are, what you are, what you can do, what you can't do, all of this stuff when really a divine being doesn't need that kind of a thing at all because you're always operating from what is good for all. See, you would, and okay, so when you leave the collective unconscious, you can view what the unconscious is actually producing in the world because at a conscious level, people don't want fighting and war. People don't want being harmed through poisons and, and uh, whatever those kind of things in the body and all this. You want to, you know, people really want to be happy and all of this. Yet what happens is we get tricked very easily when we don't really know how we function and we don't really know how this reality functions and we don't, we don't know how it manifests and then how you can manifest, you see, the reality that you desire. And instead of going along with a programmed reality, a collective reality it says that this is the way the human race is, this is the way people are, you know how awful people are and all this, wait a minute. I don't have to be a blunk. I don't have to identify as a feminist or a masculinist. I don't have to be a Republican or a Democrat. I, I'm looking for the issues, not getting caught up in the dog and pony show that's going on to keep the two sides of the game going on, which is operating from the unconscious with very deeply programmed things. I remember going into the Tower of London in, uh, obviously, England, London, England, and uh, noticing how much everything was about war and torture, weapons and armory and torture and all. What was a pathetic thing that this, this is our history, is that all of this kind of war and fighting and grabbing and all of this. But this is not, not always the way it was. This is not the uh, real reality. This is not the real, uh, how everything operates naturally and in harmony with divine laws, with divine laws, cosmic laws, you see. So, as stop, I, so you start to look at who and what you're identifying with because now you have to promote it and you have to defend it as if it's you. And then all your energy and time goes to running out there promoting and defending what you believe or what you don't believe and who you're fighting against and fight. No, not, you don't even have to fight. Go for what you want. And, and what that means is to bring forth awareness of what causes a problem. You see, it isn't, this is one of the things in real teaching, it tells you what to do and what not to do. And you can test it. Because you know that when, say for instance, if I want to identify myself with every loss or every situation or difficulty or problem or blah, 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 then, then, then I, I'm absorbed in that energy that's not even happening now. You say, not even happening now but did happen because I, I have to identify with something in this world. No, identify with who you are. You do have an identity. You don't give up an identity, but you give up the identity with the false ego that is based on a program of our collective consciousness of agreement of all these kind of things that we've been taught to accept and believe is truth through media, education, you know, certain religion, institutions. So with the agenda, is the agenda for the good of all? 
or for the good of some and not others. Is that God loves some and doesn't love others. Some are chosen, some aren't chosen, some are this and that. This is local traffic. This is not the divine. This is not the truth about who you are. And when you really know who the truth of who you are, that's what you do. That's where you play, you give your money gifts. That's where you put your energy. That's what you build because whatever you're giving to, you're increasing. So for giving to the fears, giving to the anger, giving to the hatred, giving to all of this, um, these, and so what you want to do is make the unconscious conscious and to know what you're agreeing to and what you've been agreeing to is it based on truth or false so then you have to go back to your roots and what i do is back engineer myself to my my source to who i am the root of who i am and when we do that that's what's important that's what i share and that's what i teach and for those people that do counseling with me and you know, I know I don't call it coaching only because that's more of a sport kind of a thing. And yeah, I'm a great cheerleader and all that. But we, we want to go really in and as a teacher and as a spiritual therapist in all these ways to be able to use that to empower you. Uh, and that's my work. And, and so when we root out that, and that begins to shift everything almost basically immediately. Because all manifestation is instant. It, the instant you get out of the way, the manifestation operates. And then there's certain ways that we operate, you see. And life is forgiving. And forgiving means you're back giving again instead of forgetting. When we forget who we are, our life is about trying to get something. When we are about holding grudges and resentment, instead of realize some stuff's under the bridge, there's water under the bridge, let it go. But you do know and take responsibility for yourself. You have the ability to respond, but you also have the ability not to respond. See, the real key when you own who you are it's not just a, it, it is the power of positive thinking and beyond because that's a door opener, you see, to begin to recognize the power of thoughts and the power of those beliefs as how they have affected and influenced us. But when we work with the divine, we're operating, you see, in the land of full because we don't give our power to positive or negative. We know we have to have your foot in both worlds, in this one and also in the spiritual, so that your wherever you walk is holy ground, because you're centered and you're also grounded in in nature and in the earth. So the real key is to manifest the life you desire, leave then the unconscious um, collective. The beliefs of the unconscious collected. That's why what they think of you is none of your business because it's coming from their thoughts. And I have an article that's in the Lotus magazine now that you get, can get from Chico. You can get off the internet. I'm sure all copies article just in there called um, What You Think of You is None of Your Business. Yes, and it does list some of the uh, upcoming uh, uh, this great um, uh, seminar. It's... Uh, the spiritual experience of Shasta, and inviting you to participate and, and simply email me for information, or I'll be having it up on the website, terrycolewhitaker.com. And I want to thank you for your contributions. I want to thank you all you for who are sponsoring this program, because without you, it wouldn't happen. And this because I want this to go out free. I want those who want that as well to get to as many people as possible to be to contribute whatever you can uh, to Adventures in Enlightenment. It's a nonprofit organization and always it has been always putting the money back into service. It's always what I do. And there's uh, it's, it's using money as like uh, fertilizer. You see, starting to look at it as not just junk stuff, but start to be conscious of it. And also the gifting, the bartering, the trading, the sharing, to bring ourselves back to who we are naturally without all these layers of ignorance 
that have been causing us to manifest, in a sense, this false reality of warship. With, you know, interesting, the word worship is a warship, a vehicle for conflict. That is not what it needs to be. Transform your religion. Transform your from the inside out. Take the best and dump the rest because you do know how to discern truth from false. And if it doesn't feel right, baby, it isn't right because you can know it. You can feel it in your bones and in your knowing and your truth, you see. And it may say, yeah, that's the letter of the law, but you don't live by the letter of the law, says Yeshua, the greatest scene. Yes, the teacher. You don't live by the letter of the law. You live by the spirit of it. The laws and the rules are made for people that want to dominate, control, and all these rules are man-made. Even the ones written down say it's the word of God, but it's through someone who wrote them down. And what was their intention? What was their agenda? So you want to have your own agenda of what you're about and what you're up to. And I'm here to support you. I appreciate all the support that you give so we can give this program out to others and let other people know. And whatever you can contribute is so greatly appreciated because you're also contributing your love. You're contributing your energy and power and say, yes, I want more of this. This is what I want in the world. So. Big hugs, hope to see you soon, and I'm there to serve. Wow, look at you, Mr. Big Time Cinema Maker. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs>